welcome back to the Agent Goldmine. Today's show is for you if you want to stand out at your next listing appointment, you want to know what a smell test listing appointment is and why it has a 96% conversion rate, if you want to learn creative, thoughtful, and unforgettable ways to spoil clients and their kids, plus stick around to the end to learn about an app that can not only grow your business, but also save your life. Today, we have Mary Harmon Young, and you can find her at maryharmon.com. She's been an agent since 2008, has done a total of around 600 closings, about 50 closings a year, 15 million in volume every year, and she's in a small town in Alabama. She mainly, primarily works listings. She's a 30 under 30 recipient. And last year, she had 28 listing appointments and she signed 27 of them. If you also want a 96% listing conversion, stick around. Let us know what your feedback is. We look forward to hearing from you. If you have any questions, hit us up. We're on the gram all the time. Allie the Agent, The Shelby Show. And with that, gold miners, please welcome Mary Harmon. This is The Agent Goldmine, where you'll find real talk, shit talk, and ambition. We're here to build real businesses and be more than your average agent. We want to know what the killers are actually doing within their businesses, the reality of it, all tactical, no fluff. So we're here to find out. Please share and enjoy. Oh my gosh. Today, for the first time ever, our guest has shown up with goodie bags, like gifts, and we're so excited to dig into what they are. So Mary Harmon, what what do you have in your Mary Poppins bag of like endless cool stuff for us? Yeah. So, I, you know, I realized a few years ago that we all kind of show up with the CMA. We all show up with the RPR. You know, we have so many tools that we all have access to. And that doesn't, one, it doesn't show any personality and two, it doesn't set you apart. So, started doing just some craziness and I don't always remember to bring them, but I do, you know, try to keep a few in my car because, you know, I feel like sometimes we'll be like at the grocery store and somebody will be like, do you have my, a minute to stop by the house real fast and look at this? And that counts. So, you know, right now, listings are key. And so this is what I bring. Sometimes I drop it off ahead of time with a note that says looking forward to if I'm going to be in that side of town. And it's almost like an icebreaker because when I'm talking about things, you know, Mr. Clean will do magic things and will help kind of clean things. And I talk about first impressions and making sure, you know, like the doorknobs clean and the light switch because people don't forget, you know, forget to clean those and they're, you know. Buyers look at that thing. It's a stress ball. And I make a joke about, you know, like when you're annoyed at your kid or your, you know, spouse, you can throw it at them. Then I have like tangible things in here. Like a, these are my favorite little stickers from Amazon that are color coordinated and clearly say bedroom, bathroom, tape, two Sharpies, because you're going to lose your first one, you know, just things like that. And then an actual to-do list of what I want you to do to prep your home that's branded specifically to me. Wait, we have so many questions. <laughs> okay, so just to confirm, this is, what are you calling this? this is like your pre-listing appointment drop-off goodie bag? Sure, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I just call it my seller's bucket. Seller's bucket. Okay, your seller's yeah. bucket. And this is, okay, you've already talked to the prospective client or lead mm-hmm. or whatever, and you're like, uh, okay, I'll meet at your house for the actual appointment on Tuesday at 10. So this is like, mm-hmm. what, Saturday morning? Yeah. You're driving through the neighborhood and you just drop it off and ding dong ditch and run away. Yeah. And I try to put like a, not a, not a business branded card, but like my name, you know, stationary that just says looking forward to our appointment, you know, Here's some things that might help in the meantime. And so then it's an icebreaker because I'm like, did y'all have to use your stress ball this weekend? You know, and that's normally, you know, what do you do when somebody hands you a stress ball? Even as an adult, you squeeze it and throw it at somebody, you know, so it just kind of breaks the ice and helps, you know, it is tangible things that they'll use, um, but it just kind of helps show a little bit of personality, breaks things down where it's not so stressful. I love how this is so different from... You're the first guest, like Shelby said, that that has done this and that has shown us. So the camera right now, it, for those watching on YouTube, if you if you're not watching this on YouTube, go ahead and watch on YouTube. For the camera specifically on yours yeah. right now, would you mind showing it like right in front of your face? I mean, we can see the whole thing, sure. of what the seller bucket looks like. Yeah, like that each is awesome. Item. We do <laughs> nice. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Sweet. Actually, I, I guess not you... each item. Maybe I screwed that up. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good. Anyway. You, you mentioned before, perfect. You mentioned before, oh, you know, like when you have those conversations of people are like, Hey, do you have a minute to stop by my house to give me CMA? 
I have never been in that sort of position. How <laughs> are you having those? No one's ever been like, oh, do you just have a quick second to just give me a CMA? How, like that's, that's effort up front. How are those conversations? You know, how are you starting those conversations? Where are you starting those conversations to even get yeah. to the point of giving off, giving the seller bucket? One, I'm from a smaller town. So I think that probably changes things a little bit. I'm also from the South. I'm from Alabama where, you know, going to the grocery store is a very social long event, which is why most of the time I end up Instacarting. But in the event, you know, so like when stuff are listed in kind of my target areas, I always call and have a conversation with the agent to find out stuff that's not just on MLS. Um, and so I'm one very aware of what's in our area, what's sold. And if they say, you know, Susie Q's house down the street, I'm like, oh yeah, they had just put the roof on, right? You know, it sounds like I know what's going on. So a lot of times, and then two of my videos, I'm always like, always stop and say hi, if you ever see me out. So I kind of welcome and encourage that kind of conversations. I find so, well, I don't want to just speak for myself here, but if sometimes people have bad days, you know, mm-hmm. when I'm making posts on Instagram, I really try to be who I am, you know, so that way when you see me on yeah. the streets, you know, you're not going to feel differently. And this no, comes no, from yeah. a semi-traumatic event when I met Bill Nye and I thought he was like super cool and he turned out to be such an asshole. Thank when you. you, when you have bad days, how is like, how do you, I don't know, I guess talk like a little bit psychologically, how do you go about your day? Like out in public, do you're just like, turn that switch on. You're like, Hey, people can come up to me. Cause it's, it's a small town. Mm-hmm. What does that look like mm-hmm. to you? Yeah, it definitely is. I feel like I'm an introverted extrovert. And what I mean by that is, is I have to like, tur- I have to turn myself on to be, and it's not that I'm antisocial or not friendly. It's just that I feel like we, you know, I feel like, you know, when you, it's that joke, when you see your computer screen and I literally have, you know, 37 tabs open, like that's my brain. And so sometimes when I get out of my car, I have to remind myself that I'm not like in the, you know, comfort of my own car where nobody knows and try to smile and be approachable and, you know, not jerk my kids up and, you know, things like that. And it is, it's a very, just, you just have to remind yourself, okay, you know, people are, watching and in today's world I mean you feel like you have to be that way anyways because at any time something could be you know videoed and misconstrued and taken out of context so it definitely is something you have to remind yourself and be aware of okay thank you for explaining that so then so you're having these conversations in the grocery store Mm -hmm. or you know sitting in line wherever out in public just small school oh yeah and then and then, so that's where they say, oh, do you have a minute to come by my house after the game? And you're yes. like, of course I do. I have a seller's bucket yeah. ready for you. Is that when you give the seller's bucket or at what point do you give it, do you give it to them? Yeah. You know, I'll walk in and be like, yeah, I actually had this in the car. This can kind of help y'all prep. And, you know, that way they can read over this at their own time. And it's not just me going up. And a lot of times I'll say the first time I come by, I'm really just kind of doing a smell test, seeing how that flows, how your amenities compare. And then I'll really go back and study how your kitchen compares to these three that just sold and, you know, the flow or the amount of natural light. So they're not expecting a number right then and there at that first time, because I've kind of prepped in my video and marketing that it's normally two different trips as far as. And then, two, if you are competing against other people, you're not necessarily giving away all your tips and tricks, you know, and numbers on day one before you have that signed contract. So can we go over what is in that pamphlet? What are you giving away yeah. before you actually tell them, before you become their agent? Yeah. So in here, I have six steps. I have, you know, landscaping, what's the most important, exterior, living room, and then kitchen and dining room, because a lot of times those are together. And it's really, you know, clean your stove, clean your microwave. Like I already mentioned the light switches. A lot. It's easy to do your day-to-day clean, but you know, when you have buyers coming in to really compare your house to somebody else, and it's the most expensive thing they're going to probably ever buy, the details matter. You know, uncluttering, remove all the extra chairs around your dining room table to leave it to four to six, you know, things like that. But they do make a big difference. And you're also kind of prepping for pictures. And then for like bathrooms, you know, fix any dripping. I mean, as silly as that sounds, you know, how many times have y'all gone to show a house and it's dripping and the buyer automatically assumes there's a, you know, a massive $10,000 plumbing bill to get this fixed instead of somebody tightening it. But like making sure you have a clean shower curtain because, you know, we all have that interior shower curtain that's scummy and gross, you know, but I mean, for five bucks, you can go get one at the Dollar Tree and it makes a world of difference. 
Um, and then like day of showing, so turn off your sprinklers. People don't realize and think about that, but it makes a big difference when you pull up to a house and you're like, all right, let's take it, make a run for it in between the sprinklers. Opening up the blinds, removing the pet gear, just so it's not blatantly obvious that there's pets there. And then locking up medicine, jewelry, things like that. Okay. So this is like the pre appointment mm-hmm. flow. And then you've already set the expectations that the first time that you go to their house, you said it's more of a smell test. Can yeah. you like walk us through that process? Thank you for listening. Out of respect for your time, we want to make this show as valuable as possible for you. So if you have any feedback on how we can improve, please let us know. DM us at Ally the Agent and The Shelby Show. Yeah, so I normally like start making a homework list is what I call it. So I'm taking notes and then on the on another one, you know, declutter this hall closet. You can barely open the door without stuff falling over, you know, put some fresh flowers at the front door, you know. So as you're walking through and them showing, you can also kind of write down things they really, you know, um, gravitate towards. So, you know, when we bought this house, we bought it specifically because it had the extra storage or because it had a great flow where... You know, I could see a toddler no matter where I was in the kitchen, if they were in this room, but, you know, things like that, because that can help with the story and the marketing. But two, then I'm able to really kind of feel out their motivation, what they're saying, you know, what really needs to be done, how much deferred maintenance we need to address. And then while I'm talking, I always say in a perfect world, we're going to have two to three plans. So like a plan A is like an immediate offer. I don't want to clean my house. I don't want to do the homework you're talking about. What kind of a situational number and timeline would that be? Because, you know, we have the express offers and then we can talk about when do you have, you know, when's your drop dead end date if you're transferring for work or anything like that. So you kind of get an idea of different options of how you can price the house. And, you know, if it's somebody that I've got one right now where um, Miss Betty has moved out of state, she's 92 the niece that she's lived with is like 85. They're not going to be able to do a ton of repairs, you know? Yes, the house needs to be painted, but they're not going to. So instead, we just priced it lower accordingly and, you know, kind of that. So that walk through, you get a lot more information than if you're just sitting down kind of stiffly at a table for a typical listing appointment. And then after that walkthrough, is that it for the day? You're like, oh, thank you so much. Now I'm going to go back and do my research. And the next time we'll speak is Thursday at six or whatever. Yeah. And and then I will try to follow up. I don't always have great follow up. Like I say, I'm going to, but try to send a bomb bomb and just say, hey, thanks. You know, here's that homework list I mentioned. If y'all want to go ahead and get started on some of the things that I know need to be done and y'all can kind of pick and choose, you know, if it's stuff you can do over the weekend. Do you know what your conversion is between going to these, uh, the initial, the smell test, and then getting the listing at the end? Do you know what, what that's yeah. like? I, I was, I know I didn't get one last year and it was like the only one I didn't get. And I still remember it. And I remember thinking, okay, I'm going to get it because they even let their kids like crawl in my lap and go over the children's listing. And then I still didn't get it. And I was like, I wonder what went down. And I even checking in and they never even did respond about what they liked or didn't like. So I don't know. But I mean, last year, if I had, uh, I think I sold like 28 listings, had two that ended up not listing and I lost one. So whatever that number is, you know, I got one out of say 30. Yeah. I I I would imagine that the sellers feel comfortable, especially since when you're going over to get to sign the listing agreement, they've already met you. They've known you've already helped mm-hmm. them. They've already mm-hmm. done the homework, hopefully, or at least they were told to yeah. do something. They were, they've already been guided by you. Um, yeah. so what does, okay. So what does the tempo look like where, so if they say, Hey, are you still going to go over to someone's house to do the smell test if they're looking to sell two years from now, or do, do you sure. go every single time? Or is there a time that you don't? Yeah. No, I mean, like I told, I had a conversation with a guy today. I don't know them. They were referred to me actually by some childhood friends. He specifically said in his email, I'm getting a new job, but it doesn't start till the end of August. We're planning on moving the 1st of August if we can find a house. And so my response to him was, well, let's set something up. While your house is clean, the next time you feel like it's great, let me know I need 24 hours to schedule my photographer and videographer. Let's get pictures and video while it's pretty and the grass is green and the hydrangeas are blooming. And then we'll just be ready to go whenever y'all find that house where they're moving. So I don't 
really care how fast they are now. It's more about putting them at ease and, you know, making it an easy transition. Okay. So you just did the smell test, the smell walkthrough. Yeah. You've done the bomb bomb follow-up. Thanks so much. Here's your prelim homework. So now you're home and you are prepping for the actual appointment. What does the prep look like? Yeah. So, you know, it's, we haven't had a ton of inventory lately, so it's, it's harder now to find some comps. You know, I really try to stick within 90 days, similar, you know, size, age, that kind of thing. Ideally in the same school zone, if not the same neighborhood, do an RPR. And I kind of prefaced the RPR with, this is just interesting. I don't necessarily always trust their numbers. This is what it's saying, but these are some statistical data that you might be interested in about just your area. But on, I don't know if you've ever really dove into an RPR, but on the very back, I will do use like a chat GTP to come up with a buyer persona. So what I've done is I've gone in and kind of trained chat GTP to say, this is the property I'm listing. This is the, the census data about it that I've gotten from RPR. This is kind of the information about the neighborhood. And then, I don't know, ChatGTP just uses its magical knowledge. And I say, please give me the two most likely buyer personas for this property that you suggest you would suggest I market to. And then I ask, what are their psycho demograph, psych, I can't even say these words, you know, what their demographics, their psycho, what their, you know, troubles are right now. And so then I say, give me a marketing plan specifically for these buyer personas. And so like, I think I can pull one up in Canva and kind of tell you exactly what it says. Um, but it'll tell me it's a, you know, a new, newly married couple between the ages of this is what their average income is. Because of that, we now know they're going to need closing costs. So maybe we need to go ahead and pre, you know, mentally prepare for pay, doing those closing costs. So this one I just did yesterday, it gave me one as a young family with one children and pregnant. Don't know how chat GTP gave me that, but they're telling me that they're married, middle to upper class, college educated, that their psychographics are family oriented values with a community minded mindset. They're active and would enjoy strolling to local restaurants. They're interested in home improvements and do-it-yourself projects. And so when I see that, I'm going to say, these are two easy things to do. Don't update these light fixtures or don't paint because there is a 50% chance we're going to have a buyer who wants to do it yourself project. So take care of the hidden things that we can't see, like the electrical, the plumbing, and maybe leave one or two projects. And then I can talk about in the marketing or during the showing or open house. We went ahead and left these two because you might want to pick your own color, especially if it's a nursery, you know. And then that immediately, a lot of times you can see the buyers just, comp, you know, comp, you know, oh, yeah, we've been wanting to do that. You know, we could do an accent wall here or whatever. And so I use that to help create a marketing plan. So when I come back with the price, really kind of two or three options, whether it's that fast sale, a you know, middle of the road sale or try to be, you know, overpriced and hope it works, which is not, you know, my goal. But I can then say, and here's the actual marketing plan and the buyer persona to go with the marketing plan. And the reality of it is, is, I mean, I'm changing four or five things in these templates that I've already got in Canva. So it's not a ton of effort to then put it into the Canva. I do hit print and put them on card stocks and then put it in a, I don't even know what you call it. It's like a spiral bound thing that I have at my desk. And so it looks more like a pretty, you know, presentation that they can flip through. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then you leave it with them, right? Mm -hmm. I oh, do. Okay. Okay. And so how, how often are you going to the listing appointment, the actual listing appointment, getting it signed versus them saying that they need some more time or they're still interviewing around? Well, I'm, I'm weird. I remember when I, um, I had some health issues, preeclampsia when I was pregnant with both of my kids. And I remember they just kept pushing paper. And I was already kind of like just overwhelmed and not able to whatever. So I tell people, I remember when I, people like standing over me trying to get stuff signed when I was pregnant and it made me uncomfortable. Here's a hard copy. Let's go over it. I'll send you a DocuSign as soon as we leave with a video going back over. And it is just a video of me like two years ago going over every piece of paper. 
So it's not there specific. So that way, if they want to go over it at 2 a.m., they have time. But I mean, normally within an hour or two, they sign it on DocuSign. So I don't even ask them to sign it while I'm there. That Okay. That Yeah. I, I love that. I love how much of a process this is for you. It's, it's the Canva is easy. You just swap mm-hmm. out a couple of items. The chat GPT is easy. You just copy and paste the RPR. What does your process look like post that? Like what kind of systems do you have in place post once a listing agreement is signed? Yo, real quick. This podcast is not free. Cost of admission is sharing with a buddy who benefit or throwing it on your Instagram story. I guess we'll reshare that shit. Yeah. So when I'm going through the thing, I always tell them it takes me because so I do probably overkill marketing. I have a lot of people and there's like realtors like, why do you do all that? And it's I've gotten a lot of high price listings because I treat the low price the same as I do the highest price and vice versa. So every listing is going to do professional photography, possibly editing on the pictures. Then we're going to do drone footage and then we're going to do video. And within the video, we're doing three different videos because Facebook, Instagram and YouTube will not. They don't like playing together. So they wanted a different ratio and a different size and a different length. So we're doing three different videos. And so that's three different people that have to come out. So when I tell them, it takes me about 24 hours to get all three of them scheduled. Will you go ahead and kind of tell me like, are you going to get a cleaning person in here that we want to come like right after she leaves before the kids get home from school? What does that normally look like? So I've already taken notes that the cleaning lady comes at Tuesday at 12. So let's schedule it for four o'clock on Tuesday. And then I'll go ahead and say, so David and the guys can come about four or four thirty on Tuesdays. Will that still work? I remember you saying, you know, Matilda, the cleaning lady is coming then. And then, so I'm not even, I'm just kind of telling them what to do. That makes sense. I remembered my question from earlier. Now with this NAR stuff, of course, it's not even, you know, finalized yet. Are you going to be switching your process or what changes does that mean for you in your business? No. So I have a sliding scale commission anyways. And I kind of mentioned it earlier, like the plan A, B, and C. And so, you know, if you want the express offer type thing and an instant offer, you know, it's this price. If you don't want the drone and the video, it's this price. If you just want it all, it's this. I also have it in my marketing plan that I offer uh, a buyer's compensation. And so it's not even a conversation about how much you want to pay. It's that we want to attract the most number of buyers. And by doing offering a buyer's compensation, that's what we're doing is, is welcoming all and inviting them all. And so, so far, you know, we also in uh, Tuscaloosa haven't had commission or MLS since I want to say in October of last year. We haven't seen anything change or different and probably is a good thing that it makes you have more conversations with realtors. Um, But other than that, we hadn't really seen much change. Okay. So you have, when you're prepping for that round two appointment and you're all Mm -hmm. prepped and you have your marketing plan, you have your options, you nailed it, you left and they're signing via DocuSign within a couple hours. I totally forgot to ask while you were there, at what point does the children's listing agreement come into play? Because guys, listeners out there, theagentgoldmine.com, Mary Harmon has brought a children's listing agreement for you guys to rip off and duplicate and put into your business. So Mary Harmon, what's the deal with this? Yeah. So started a few years ago. Well, I will say is now mine are a little older. They are 10 and eight. But even when they were younger, especially during COVID, they would have to come with me to various appointments because they were just with us 24 seven during COVID. And so other kids were too. So we'd bring, you know, a ball to go through in the front yard with their other kids. But I mean, it was a, we had to figure out how to have adult conversations and get through this while also, you know, encouraging the kids to not destroy the house or whatever. And so bribery is always something that works. And so a lot of times I'll just sit down with them and say, even before the parents sign, like I've gone over the paperwork to explain it to them. And I'll say, and this is for you, you know, so come over here and let's talk about it. So tell me, what's your favorite store? If I have, I was going to buy you something, would you want it from, you know, the local ice cream store, Target, Ulta, Five Below. And then they kind of talk to me about what they like and have that conversation. I'll be like, okay, so let's do this. Can you turn the lights on right before y'all leave for a showing? So, you know, while the parents are kind of getting the, you know, making the beds or whatever, you know, the kids are going around making sure all the lights are on, all the lamps are on. And we can walk through the rooms and say, 
let's turn these on. Let's turn these on and let's show you, you know, show you how to do it. And don't knock it off, you know, be gentle and have those kind of conversations. So you're also bonding with the kids. So then the kids are like, when's Mary Harmon coming back? Or when's, you know, that kind of thing. But then I tell them to make sure like the toilet lids are closed, that they pick up their dirty clothes, that they make their beds. And if they, you know, check it off that they're going to do it and then they sign their name and then I sign my name. But if they do it consistently, you know, I'll bring them the gift card. And so it's just a kind of way to bring them in, keep them content, allow them to participate in the process. And it also wins brownie points, you know, when the parents, because I mean, anybody that loves my kids, you know, I'm more willing to give a chance than to my that's, you know, stuffing and not encouraging to them. That's, I, I, that's so cute, you know, like getting the kids involved, it helps the yeah. parents with their headache and all of yes. that. Not calling the kids the headache, I'm calling the process of selling a home. Yeah. Selling a home, <laughs> there is no two ways about that. At what point do you give the gift cards to the kids? Is it before closing? At closing. At right closing. at closing. So I'm like, mm -hmm. I'll call. And so and like that way, when I call to schedule the appointment, so-and-so's coming, I'll be like, okay. John, do you hear we have one at two? So y'all remember the, you know, what we're going to do and y'all are going to do it. And I'm going to want your mom to text me that if you do it or not. Okay. And so then I'm like, oh, I got a good text message that you turned on all the lights last time. So that's another, you know, another point, that kind of thing. So, because I mean, the reality of it is, is everybody's on speakerphone in the car so the kids can hear it and everything. So, but at closing, I'll bring that gift card to them. So while the parents are signing, you know, their portion, I'm over there talking to the kids and giving them their gift cards. Mm. The creativity continues. So we started with the seller bucket and now, yeah. you know, the children's listing agreement. What else do you either have with you physically or talk about yeah. your sleeve for this creativity? So this is my little buyer's bag. I bring it to the first showing. I keep some at the, at the open houses. I have just a plain Amazon notebook that says you've got this because everybody's nervous because you're like me, I'll take notes on the back of receipt in my car and then I'll lose it. So then it's all, you know, like in one place. I still ha I have the foot, whatever you call them, go over your shoes for especially like new construction where they want you to take your shoes off. Instead, they can just leave this in the car and have the, the booty. stress ball that comes back and then bubble gum because we don't want anybody hangry. And we make jokes. I'm like, all right, y'all need to go get, you know, if they start arguing in the house about I like this house. Why don't you? I'm like, listen, you're acting hangry. Do you have bubble gum in there? And it just kind of like, you know, gets the point across that they need to chill out, especially in, you know, in front of the kids or anything like that. So that's what is, that. And the, what, what does the bag look like? It is literally a clear, I don't know why, just like a little birthday bag. And then I just put a sticker on the clear part of the bag. And the sticker says Home Buyer Survival Kit. With your face. Very yeah. cute. Okay. Love it. Yeah. So that's one of the things that like I think about more and more with, as my obsession with branding and marketing continues. Yeah. It's like, where can I infiltrate all of the minds? Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What this else? Is all my favorites. So like I have my favorite boutique, favorite coffee shop, favorite Mexican, favorite park, dessert, music. And it's just about our area. So especially good at like open houses when people aren't used to you know, they don't know. And I'd be like, and this one's down the street. So you could walk down there. You know, it's just a good, like, uh, conversation starter. Okay. How and that many goes of in each... the buyer's bag? The what? That one like in the that. buyer's bag? Sorry. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, I cool. keep it in the buyer's bag. Yeah. Okay, Allie. How many of each do you keep in your car at, or, like, with you at all times? Like, three of each. Okay. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> My, I have a super random question going back to what you said previously about social media. It was super quick about sure. the, the ratios that you mentioned. Yeah. Instagram is a different ratio. Facebook. Do you know what the ratios are? No, okay. I pay professionals. No. Okay. Yeah. I know YouTube is wider. Right now, Instagram appears to be favoring videos less than 30 seconds even though they will do 60 and then YouTube will do obviously longer videos. And so it just depends. They're based on different ratios and links to try to, and it changes, but luckily my photographers or videographers keeps up with all that. And so he'll try different things and things like that. Okay. I know you got another goodie bag over there or yeah. something. What else? Pop. you got? This does not look as cute. I do normally put a little sticker on it, but since I just grabbed one that was pre-made, this is my birthday box. 
Um, if you remember, I will tell you a secret that I don't have a CRM. I just have my brain. Shame. So Shame. Once a month, so oh once a month I sit down and go down through Facebook birthdays that are coming up. So I've been trying to input them as it comes up, but I'm still not great at it. So I'm do I need to do better. But this is you can see it just says this is your birthday in a box and it says, you know, put your candle and it has a red branded candle, not branded, but a red, my color, in a little Debbie snack cake that has sprinkles on it. And then I have just a little matchbox. And then what do you call these things? <laughs> and a balloon. <laughs> and then in here, it has whatever that crinkly paper is. And so I try to make 60 of these at a time and just put them in a trash bag in my garage. And then as it gets closer to the end of the month, I will handwrite their addresses and put them in the mail. And it costs you asked me this last time. I don't remember. It cost me $2.12 to mail it. I know that much. And I use Pirate Ship to mail, to bulk print the postage and then print the labels at home. Wait, Pirate Ship? Mm-hmm. Uh, wait, what is that one more time? Pirate Ship. And it's, yeah, I don't, I don't get it though. So you can bulk order po- postage for those boxes. Wait, mm-hmm. so you don't have to go and mail them. You can just put them yeah. in your mailbox? Um, no. Yes. Wait, your yes. mailbox? Yeah. And so what, so I can upload an Excel sheet into Pirate Ship, and I've already pre put put in there the size of my boxes and the weights. So then I just click birthday boxes, and then it like makes a pretty label. But then it like just automatically charges my credit card, and then I have a label machine. Well, not even label machine. It just prints labels. I have the size labels that I want for my box from like Office Max, and it prints it on my printer, and then I can just literally get put them in my mailbox. I hand them to the, so Dude. it just saves me a trip to the post office. No, for sure. The reason why I ask so much is because every time someone joins Five Pillars Nation, we send them a t-shirt, you know, and like a welcome yeah. type this of thing. Be all of that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's what we need to, because I have, I have an assistant who's helping me with it, but I know that she's physically making trips to, to yeah. the, the post Absolutely. office. So and no that's more. The thing that I remember you getting on to me before is it's, it is me, myself and me. I don't have anybody to uh, to make these. I don't have anybody to go to the post office for me. I don't have anybody to put the labels on. So if something's getting done, I'm doing it. I'm uploading. I'm going out doing the marketing. I'm editing the videos. And so anything I can do to help somewhat cut down, a, you know, a process is very important. No, it makes sense. And okay. one more question. You you said the addresses. Where are these addresses coming from? If you're Are you pulling uh, them out of your brain CRM? I'm pulling them through Forewarn. I don't know if y'all use that app, but that's my fancy stalker app. Sure. What is it? Forewarn is offered through our MLS. And so we, I mean, don't technically pay for it. It's through them, but it is literally a stalker app. That's the logo. Um, but when you use it, I have to use my face. Um you can either use a name and a location, or you can use a phone number. And so I'll just put my husband in here. And so, two, eight. when I click a number, it tells me his name, his age, his address, his phone records, 12 history for addresses, five property records over the years. And he has no bankruptcies, no liens, no judgments, no foreclosures. Most importantly, no criminal infractions. So if somebody calls me that I don't know that says, I would like to go look at this house, even if they sound nice, while I'm talking to them, I am running their number in my forewarn app. And I hate to say if they've got four bankruptcies and two liens, you know, they probably aren't going to be the best option. But my first and foremost job is to keep my clients, you know, I'm liable while people are inside my client's house. And so kind of just an initial check. But two, if they have a, a criminal record, I'm bringing somebody with me. But typically their addresses are also very valid. And it says in here, we've he's lived at this house since 530 of 2017. But, you know, if there was an overlap or anything like that. And then on his phone records, it shows his mobile, his residential and his office number. So now if I needed to stalk them in other ways, I could. Dude, I feel like that app is awesome. Definitely did not have that in my North Carolina MLS in the process yeah. of getting licensed here in Kentucky. So I hopefully will have it there. Allie, do you have that in Arizona? 
It is not included in our MLS. It's a, uh, it's an add on. So you have to pay for it. And I don't know how much it is, it. but, but it 100% worth it, especially if you oh plan on meeting strangers, if your business is like Zillow leads or just strangers in general at properties. I didn't because I was going by myself, but even when I would show homes by myself and take videos, there are other people on the street, you know, that would knock mm-hmm. the door. And so it would get shady and it definitely gets shady in, in Tucson. So yeah, I highly recommend. That's cool that your MLS so, includes it. Yeah. Can you do that just from someone's name or you said it needs name and yeah. phone number? Or yeah, what? It, either or. And oh so can you do a mass um, export? <laughs> can you do every, can you select everyone in a city and export? Am yeah, I getting crazy here? Just individuals. Oh, so, I'm um, going to. Yeah. The okay. name, let's see. Shelby is Johnson, right? Mm-hmm. And you said, oh, where is it are nationwide? you nationwide? No, it's not. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. You're going to find her felonies. <laughs> where, did you, where did you move in Kentucky? Lexington. All right. Let's see. Yeah. Let's see if it pulls up. Are you 27? No. There is a 27 year old, a 26 year old, another 24 year old. So it doesn't pull it yet, but there's somebody. There's a Shelby Ann, a Shelby Laura, a Shelby V, and a Shelby Catherine. So, but yeah, depending on, you know, it's only how to kill them all. There's only one Shelby in this town. <laughs> okay, that sounds really creepy. And then that's when the felonies pop up. Just kidding. Okay, Allie, do you have anything before we head to our final questions here? What else you got for Mary Harmon? I do. Mary, I know that you also uh, put blogs out too. So what kind of a system do you have yeah. in place for your blogs? Apple listeners, this short pause is to ask you for a review. Here's how to do it back out of the specific episode, go to the page where you see all the episodes, scroll down, keep scrolling. Perfect. Now tap those five stars. Thank you so much. Back to the show. I don't, I wish I did. Really? Yeah. I I try to do like certain number of posts. And if I do a video, whether it's long form or short, I do try to run it through chat GTP to turn it into a blog, blog post, but I end up more last minute doing it and then posting it. I, I need to do better. But it, I mean, especially when you're busy, it's just hard to know that you need to do videos or you need to do a blog, but you also have somebody want to go show a house and that produces more tangible money, you know, than the other. So I need more of a system there. But a lot of times I end up just doing Opus is a new a new AI video editing tool that I've been using because it takes the video into very, very specific captions that I feel like are almost like better than like just a chat GTP. But there's things like that that I should use better to help the process, but I don't always. Well, it seems like you have a really good blog presence. Like when I, when I Googled you, Thank blogs you. came up. So I'm like, oh, she must have a process. Good. So you're killing yeah. it. <laughs> I wish. Is, there, is there anything that we missed that you'd like to cover before we head to our wrap up questions? I don't think so. I just try to tell people like when people think, oh, Small town Alabama, I will never have anybody I need to send there. But the reality of it is, is we have a lot that you probably will have referrals for. We have the Mercedes Benz plant, it's the only one in the country. So if you hear somebody that's going to even work for a supplier for Mercedes, I think we have 38 international suppliers here. That's in my town. Um, we have the BF Goodrich here. So those, a lot of those people, they bring in a ton. We have New Course Steel, so one of the largest steel plants in the country. And then, of course, the University of Alabama clearly brings in a lot of professors, a lot of students, a lot of VRBO. And then most recently, which I haven't quite understood why, we have the new National Water Center. And so that is bringing in a lot. I don't know. It's kind of random. But bringing in a lot of the federal workers that are there, whether they're studying like flooding, uh, hurricanes, like El Nino stuff, that building is almost finished. So it'll be interesting to see um, what all that brings. But yeah, so we have a lot of opportunities to send referrals that when you're initially thinking about Alabama, you don't think of. Yeah. And I'm glad that you mentioned that. So that's going to be in the back of people's brains. Oh, yeah. oh, like someone that I know is going to move to work for Mercedes. So they're going to hit up yeah. Mary Harmon. So that's right. Let's go to the let's go to the wrap up questions. Okay. What is your favorite app or tool in your business or personal life? Google Drive. I can access it anywhere. I don't always have to have internet. I can access it on my phone, laptop, and where I make a change on one, it automatically changes on the other. 
What is your favorite book or podcast? Recently, I've been following the Daily Real Estate Tip, which is Tristan. I can never say his last name, but I think the image is like D-R-E. And what I like about it is because my phone will ring and I'll get interrupted is it is like 10 minutes. And so it is this image. And so I can handle a 10 minute, you know, easy tip. And that's tangible, you know, with specifics on how to do it instead of I don't always get to listen to the whole like hour and a half podcast or anything. Yeah, that yeah, that's perfect for a commute time, especially like in a smaller town town. Mm -hmm. What what events are you going to in 2024? The only one that I haven't, I haven't even booked it yet, but I mean, I'll make myself go is the 30 under 30 event in um, New York City. That is an event that I always make happen just to be in the room with some of the best of the best. And when we walk in that room, we're all kind of equal. And so nobody's in charge. Nobody's the leader. We're all just trying to, you know, help each other as much as possible. And it's one of my favorite ones. And it's also put on by our own 30s. So we rotate um, sides of the country. So last year we were in Seattle with all the um, West Coast 30s putting it on. And then this year it's in New York with the New York uh, previous 30s. Um, that do that. So we're excited. They just came out with um, this year's uh, NAR 30 under 30 about two weeks ago. So the 1st of April. So we're excited to welcome them this fall in New York and get so to fun. meet them and hear how awesome they are. Very cool. Okay. Well, how can listeners and us, how can we all help you in your business? Yeah. So as many referrals are, po- are you know, great. I'm still working on my YouTube channel. I'm determined to make it work. I wouldn't say it's working yet. I think last time we talked, Shelby, I was at like 40 subscribers. Now I'm at 112. So technically I have gotten stronger, but I still feel like it's like my mom and, you know, her Bible study and five other people. So trying to build my presence, it's a mix of like tips for other realtors, as well as just information on our community. But all of my social media is just Mary. My website is maryharmon.com. All my social media is just my name, which is Mary Harmon. And the only thing is, is YouTube is technically the whatever name is moving in Tuscaloosa. But if you search in my name, it'll pop up as well. Perfect. So maryharmon.com. You heard it here. And in case you don't, oh my gosh, I almost knocked over my lamp. And in case you don't follow us already, we are Ali the Agent and The Shelby Show. Go on theagentgoldmine.com for today's free golden nugget. They're always free. So download a copy of that the child children listing agreement. And reach out to Mary Harmon for any referrals or questions that you have. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Be a bro and share this show. Thanks so much for listening, dude. If you want the golden nugget that this guest provided, see the show notes or just go straight to theagentgoldmine.com. That's where we keep all our resources for you. Till next time.